All right, welcome to Rezobiz, episode three of three of the uh, overhauling RQ Jones series. Um, and it's Christmas time, practically. It is Christmas time, actually, but it looks like Christmas time here on the workbench. We got um, all sorts of parts for this RQ Jones. I have a little bit more history on it, and of course, then we're going to put it together and hear it. So, lots to do today. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Bro with Bro Guitars, and welcome to Rezobiz where everything is greater with a resonator. Alright, so I'm going to go through the list of stuff we got. We got new tuners, um, exact um, replica really of what was on it. But man, are they pretty. Brand new. So we'll get that put on there. And then... Um, we got strings, I've got a, a raw bone nut, I got the, uh, this is the screw for the legend cone, um, this would be my preferred cone for sure. We got a new tailpiece, new cover plate, new sound rings, and then um, a number 14 spider bridge, and I've already put clear tone saddles in it, uh, which would be my preference for saddles, but there's all sorts of types of saddles we can do. So I think that that covers it. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's start putting this thing back together. All right, so I've marked it out a little bit. And changing, I'm going to change this nut up just a little bit different. I feel like Mr. RQ Jones did it narrower than we're used to doing. It's only a 16th difference, but I've found it's... Um, a little bit makes a big difference. Uh, so anyhow, I want to try to keep it as close to what I normally set things up as I can. So got that fitting pretty good. Just going to clean it up a little bit more and get that set in there. Good. All right. All right. Get this thing. I got some glue on it. Get this thing set in. And I already cleaned up that slot so it's fitting pretty good. But these are always glued in so when you change your strings, uh, nut don't fall. It's better to, if you don't know, most of you guys probably know that, but um, it's better to change one string at a time. That way you're not changing uh, the setup. But if you happen to, good thing to practice, I think, to do probably is to glue that nut in. See. There we go. And when I put this together, I'm going to be careful to do like it was done before. And I'm going to make sure all my screws are going the same direction. I think that's neat to take the de to take care of such small little details on a Phillips which I think I work with Phillips most of the time. Um, I don't think it necessarily matters. Oh, look at that. This is a Phillips, so don't, it don't matter. It's not a flat end. But maybe I can, uh, if I can find my screwdriver, maybe I can still turn that Phillips head to make sure it matches. Let's see. And I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but the uh, the lot when I took this apart, I think I, this was the last video, the screw heads had a slot in it. Just went across, you know, it's just a, for a straight head, but they were all lined up to go the same direction. And I really, I thought that was neat that the detail had been taken to make sure they were lined up like that. And so I'm thinking, even though these are Phillips, maybe I can still. It doesn't. It doesn't no, it's not as noticeable. It seems like, but. All right. So 
we filled the holes and now I've already I've got these re-drilled and we get new pegs on it. Pegs, tuners. They look so pretty. Alright, let's see. I'm gonna try to get these as perfect straight as I can. Got that one. There. They're all going the same direction. Even though Phillips not a regular, but there. That's very neat that they take care to do that. All right. Or I say they, probably he. Okay. All right. That's uh, that'll get us a start here for our strings. Um, had the wonderful privilege of getting to go see Tim Shearhorn, and um, he blew my mind with some of the stuff he could do. But uh, he kind of taught me a little how to use. He, I think, well, I don't know if he, who invented it, who came up. I've only seen, I've seen a couple other guys with it, but I think they all got it from. Tim Shearhorn how to use these uh, um, tools for cutting your slots. Anyhow, that will get me close and I'll have to check it later. So let's go ahead and we'll move on down. I got notifications, all sorts of stuff going on. We'll move on down and work on this cone. Alright, so if you're new to this, um, when you're putting your, or at least this is the way I do it. When I put the set screw in it, I just snug it up, give it a, about a half turn. And then after the pressure is on the Dobro, I'll tighten it up a little bit, a little bit more. Um, so that needs to be snug, so you'll end up with a, a buzz. Most people know that, um, but if you happen to be new to it, uh, that's a good place to look for a buzz because if you just snug it up here and then once we put the strings on a new setup then you're going to end up with a, uh, a a rattle, a buzzy type of thing. Alright, so to recap a little bit just so you you know this is a legend cone a number 14 spider bridge and then I've got these are my clear tone saddles and what that is it's, it's a um, maple and then um, a composite on top. It's not it's not wood or anything. It's a it's a composite, and um, it's a material. I've kind of went through a whole bunch of different ones to find one that I liked. And this one, when I heard it, it was just it just had a clear sound to it, clearer than some of the other ones. Some of them were too harsh and everything. So anyhow, that's where the name come from too. But uh, I prefer those saddles. So that's what I put on here unless somebody asks but there's a lot of different kinds um, of saddles that people will use I don't know for sure how the setup is so I will just get a few in it to hold it down good and you say, well, why did you have to cut new holes? Well, that was because a new cover plate, and it wasn't exactly like the other one. It was just like that the um, tuners, they're pretty much the same thing, but they're just, just very slightly off. And so I had to adjust it. So I just get a little drum sander for a drill, and I'll just clean up the edges of that.
Now this tuning gear is over the top like this. This is this ain't too bad. These tuning gears on the dough broke going down in the back. That's a pain in the neck. mess with that. Oh, that didn't help at all. Yeah, so I had a <clears throat> I had a buzz in this string. And um, no, I was fighting around trying to figure it out. And I have to say that's part of Part of the reason, um, you know, a person wants to do their, change things around and all that uh, on their dobro, go for it. But, it would be, it would be uh, helpful to have a good setup guy. I tried to do a video where we had, I could put a, a little log of where all the different setup guys for dobro were. And what I found out was there's like hardly none. <laughs> but the difference in, it's just, it's, um, there's so much that goes into both ends of this, this guitar. And it's just like every little thing um, that you do on the setup, it matters. Um, so if you're learning and you're, you know, you're trying to, to get it figured out and all that, that's, that's one thing. But if you're actually just swapping stuff around, um, I would definitely encourage you to uh, send it to a, a setup guy. I mean, if you're wanting, if you're really trying to get a, just a better sound, if you're playing and wanting to do something yourself, I would say the first one of the things you'd I'd really encourage you to do is just order your nut and your saddles um, so that they're pre-slotted and they're already they're they're already set up well, so that you're not fighting. Well, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't I don't use that all the time so I couldn't say that you'll never have a buzz but you're less likely let's put it that way um, beard they've got it they got some things figured out and they're they're putting out some um, you know they, they got real nice quality machines I think working out exactly where everything goes as far as your spacing and then the way that the way it's cut and um, I've used their their slotted stuff pre slotted stuff um, before and I I really didn't have a problem with it, but um, I like, I don't know, man, I got my own exact spacing that I like, but it's taken me a long time to get to where I could cut these slots just just right so that I'd be happy with them. And so, and I was, I think I said this in the Hot Rod video the um, uh, two years ago, maybe now, um, the flame, the flamed guitar that we did. I spent a lot of time learning to build the guitar and then then there's a lot of time learning how to set the guitar up and I think I've probably got more time learning to set it up than the guitar build the guitar um, and I'm still always searching and, and trying to figure out just little things. Uh, it's It's been a lot of work just to learn how to find the buzzes but I think one of the interesting things that I run into is you got some guys out there that are just setup guys and they've spent as much time setting up working on the setup of a dobro or an instrument um, that other guys have, have actually divided that time up a bit and learned to build them and set them up and I think it's those guys who just do the setup that are likely to be um, no they're just they're amazing uh, Bobby Wright is one of those guys. He's like the Dobro Whisperer. <laughs> He's something else. He could just he he on one of my guitars. He just looked at it and then he didn't play it. Um, and this has been a couple years back, and 
and I was asking about a problem with it, and he goes, well, I can already tell you what's wrong with it. And he went on to explain what was going on with it, and I thought, oh, well, that's good, because that's definitely not as big a deal as what I was thinking it was. And um, sure enough, I straightened out what he was talking about, and I had a better sounding guitar, and that is my guitar, actually, to this day. In fact, you'll see it in some of the videos hanging on the back wall, but when I first set that up, I thought, oh, I don't know. Something's just not that great with this guitar, but he's got a, a real good. He's he's just got a way about it. But that's all he does when it comes as far as dobros. He plays them, and he look, picks them apart and listens to them. He is a good setup guy to to go to. Um, Paul Beard's a good setup guy, um, and I can set up dobros. And that's that's all I work on. But um, but I work on the whole thing, and I don't the setup thing is not generally my um, my deal I don't do lots of setup things other than on my dobros personally this one happens to be a customer he wanted me to do this along with the uh, build the guitar um, but that that Bobby Wright he can uh, he can just I, I really do I almost think he can just talk to the instrument and figure out oh little buddy what's wrong with you what's not feeling right and, and uh, he figures things out that most guys wouldn't and then it comes back singing like it's never sung before so if you're looking to really get a lot of sound out of your dobro you need a good setup guy I would I would prefer myself uh, if I was sending it somewhere Bobby Wright um, but I would say also those guys at Beard they they definitely could set your your instrument up Tim Shearhorn could set your t instrument up but he's not uh, um, really building it or doing it anymore and I know that there's other guys that are out there it's just um, I put out a uh, kind of an inquiry trying to find people and I really didn't get a whole lot and then I, maybe I got I got a little bit of interest but it wasn't I was looking for people who this is the main thing they do and I I didn't seem to find a lot of that so anyhow I just kind of posted the top ones right off the top of my head but anyhow, a lot of work goes into it. Let's test this thing, and um, we we'll have to take all this apart, put put the cover plate back on it. I still need to do some buffing on it, and then I'm we're pretty close to done. We'll get to hear the sound of this thing, I mean the real sound. I use a on my. I've got a couple different tuners around the shop, but. On my phone is this clear tune uh, tuner, and I love this thing. It uh, has a dial in the middle here that will light up green when it's right, and then this one up here gets is real, real sensitive and specific, and you can see where that red line. So I think I probably focus on this the most, though. I got her tune all over. I'm really, I'm really liking the sound of this guitar. Jones had something really going. I, <laughs> I mean, to me, you compare this to, and if you're a Dobro brand lover, I apologize, but um, you compare this to a regular Dobro. And, they just didn't have that sound, but he's done that, I think, five posts in there. Um, he's got a little bat. I mean, this is a good sound of guitar. I'm really impressed.
got a new coat on it, new spider, new everything. So it's all settling in to be, uh, well, a dobro now. Very, very nice. Very impressed. More sound than that guitar than I thought there was going to be. And it's got a nice growly tone to it, which I like real well on a guitar. A dobro. Alright, well. <clears throat> I have a little bit of a history. A little more history I thought I would save for the end on this, this dobro. So, uh. If you wanted just to see the build, you could see that. But there was a little bit more interesting things that I found out about this. Um, and so, and, and this is my first experience with an RQ Jones. So I'd like to share that with you. this little bit of information that I've kind of gathered up while I'm working on. So here we go. Story time. All right. So a little story time. It's like Christmas time only. Uh, isn't the Christmas story? This is the Dobro story. Um, sadly, I'm kind of uh, ashamed as I learn about uh, R.Q. Jones and this this Dobro. I find out that um, he's a huge part of the history of Dobro. In fact, I learned this that he was the first custom builder to really try to improve on the Dobro brand design. And so he started in, I believe, uh, my notes say 1975, and then he quit about the early 80s. This guitar was acquired um, by my customer, who I'm building a, a Dobro for, but he wanted this kind of refurbished and cleaned up and a uh, new setup and stuff on it. And um, I'd heard of RQ Jones, but... Um, Dobros, but I hadn't seen one. I didn't know a lot about them. But he told my customer told me that he was looking for um, a nice sounding guitar, and he was looking for something a little nicer. And his dad said when he was 18 that he would buy him one if he found one he liked. And they went to a festival, found a guy at a festival that um, had a, had gotten a, practically a brand new one. He got it from a guy who, or was selling it for a guy who. Um, decided uh, playing Dobro wasn't the, his, the thing he wanted to do and so he had just got it and then he was going to sell it and so my customer picked it up there and has had it ever since uh, 1978 one year after I was born so the history on this Dobro started a year after um, I was born and then um, finally year 220 this thing comes into my shop and uh, so that's that's the history so far. I found out the history on, or at least for this this Dobro, but I found out the history for R.Q. Jones. A little, some of the interesting things is that uh, he he had uh, a lot of people that we know um, that made help make the Dobro, um, at least in the, since the 70s and well, and even before that, really famous. He had famous people playing it. People like uh, Farrell Stowe and Leroy Mack, Uncle Josh, uh, Jerry Douglas, Mike Aldridge, Phil Ledbetter, and quite a bit of other people. Um, but the, all these guys have owned uh, at least one of them, if not multiples, of this, uh, this guitar 
uh, Mike Aldrich had uh, some custom special made um, eight strings I think I read eight string Dobros made um, an interesting little bit of history on it was Jerry Douglas was approached by uh, Mr. R.Q. Jones and he played the, the, the guitar and he said hey it's a lot louder for sure but the the highs don't quite have what I what I think I would want you ought to try making one out of mahogany and um, R.Q. I guess he thought that was probably okay and so he made one and he made actually two different kinds he made a laminate body uh, out of mahogany and then he made a um, uh, actual real uh, mahogany uh, what I what I read he was using um, African mahogany which is um, in the mahogany family a little bit punchier sound and um, after and I don't know which one for sure whether it was this, the, the solid wood or the laminate I know Jerry he was he was used to a laminate um, from what I read anyhow I say I know I, I wasn't there but what I read was that he was used to a, a mahogany laminate um, Dobro brand guitar and he liked the sound of that and that was what was kind of pushing him to ask R.Q. Jones to build one like that. So then was created the mahogany which is what this is and uh, this is a solid body mahogany. So it was very very interesting. Uh, Mr. R.Q. Jones had uh, a, a big part in the Dobro history and he was definitely um, he got away from that sound uh, ring he put in a, a wooden baffle and had the sound posts and I was surprised as you saw the sound that this thing has for um, you know, in that era I didn't know they were making them I, di I didn't I did not know they were making them to sound as good as this sounds and so I was very thoroughly and, and, and surprised and just really enjoyed getting to put this together and hear it so if you've liked the video hit the subscribe button and if you haven't subscribed and like hit the like button and we'll see you I don't know it's hard to put videos out during the holidays so we'll try to get maybe another one out before the year's up but if not we'll see you uh, next uh, next year 2021